In step 10, we're asked to create a new workbook and then to use a figure shown in your book as a guide to creating it. And I'm going to just take a shortcut. Rather than my typing all of the information needed for my UTE summary sheet, I'm going to just copy and paste it. So I'll create a new file. And this one I'm going to name and call it UTE Summary. And then I'm going to open one of my other workbooks. It doesn't really matter which one. So I will open my Carson City workbook. And I'm going to borrow or copy this information that's in the summary sheet. So I'll do a control C to copy that. I don't need this file open anymore, so I'll go ahead and close it. I'll position myself in, in cell A1 and do a paste or a control V. Okay, other than some column width um, and formatting issues, I have a copy of uh, the information that I need. So let's go ahead and do the formatting. So I will merge and center the headings. I'll merge and center each of these subheadings and then I'll just plain center all of the individual headings. And rather than the same sales Carson City, I'll modify that so that it says sales all dealers. And then we're going to get rid of all of the numbers that were typed here. Which must include the totals as well. And now we're ready to complete the UTE summary. Although it's not necessary, one of the quickest and easiest ways to do that is to just go ahead and open the other files. With my UTE summary file open, I will go ahead and open the other three files I need. So I'll go to my case two folder and I'm going to open UTE Carson City. I'll open my UTE Reno file and I'll open my UTE Vegas file. Now I've got all four files open. The best way to work with this is to change the view. So click on your view tab and choose arrange all. Tiled is the best arrangement click OK. It doesn't matter what order these arrangements are in, but note that your summary sheet should be active in each window. So if it isn't, take the time to make your summary sheet active in each window. What we're going to do is in the UTE summary file, we are going to sum up the corresponding numbers in each of the three cities. So that's just going to be an equal. Then, and, and again, it doesn't matter what order you go in. I'll come over to Reno and I'll click once to make the sheet active and click again to pick up the value, the 244 that's in cell B6. I'll click the plus symbol and again I'll go to whatever sheet, doesn't matter which one. I'm going to go to Vegas. Click once to make the sheet active. Click again to add up the 244, hit the plus sign, go over to your last sheet, in my case it's Carson City, click once to make the sheet active, click again to pick up this number 245. This is a very long and complicated formula, but it was very simple to do by simply clicking on the other three sheets. When you press enter, you should come up with 733. You can again use your fill handle to fill across, but we do have one little problem. That file has absolute references in it. I'm going to pause the video so I can get this file uh, larger so you can see better. Okay, if we look at our formula bar, you can see that we have a formula that says go to the UTE Reno file, go to the summary sheet, and add B6. 
to the Vegas file summary sheet B6 and add the Carson City file summary B6. The trouble with this formula is that it has absolute references. So I'm going to highlight the whole thing and press the F4 key three times. Remember the F4 function key gives me the ability to toggle between absolute and relative references. Highlighting the whole formula before I do so takes care of all three of them at the same time. So you want to make sure there are no dollar signs in your references and when you're ready press enter. That will allow you to use your fill handle to fill this across and again double clicking to fill it down. In step 11 we're asked to use our UTE Carson City workbook to create an Excel template. That template will be named UTE template. So I've already got my UTE Carson City file open. I'll do a file save as, that's how you create a template, and I'm going to save it as, uh, and I'm going to, I'll try, it says to put it in your case 2 folder. You're going to see though that that's going to change. So I'm going to call this UTE template. I'm going to save this rather than as an Excel workbook, I'm going to save it as an Excel template. Now I don't have my extension showing, but if I did this would be an XLTX extension, the T standing for template. Notice though that as soon as I said save this as a template, that the templates folder opened. So that's normal. That's what Excel likes to do. It wants to save all templates with the computer in the templates folder. And I'm going to go ahead and let that happen so you see how this really works. We're going to click Save. And then I'm going to close this file. Now let's say it's the next year and you want to start your new um, information about your auto sales. And so you want to open this template to be able to use. So you do that by going to File, New, and I'm in version 2013, which is a little different, so I'm going to go to Personal. In version 2010, you'll find a button called My Templates, and if you choose that, you'll be able to find your UTE template. So here it is, and when I open it, you will also notice that the um, file name, UTE template, a 1 was added to it. So that's what Excel does to keep you from accidentally overwriting your template. A second thing that Excel does is when you go to save the file, and let's see, I'll find my folder, my case 2 folder. Not only does it add a 1 to the file name, but it also automatically tries to save it as a workbook. And so then we were asked to save this as Carson City 2014. And we'll click the Save button. And that concludes Step 12. In Step 13, you're asked to save that file once again in SkyDrive. SkyDrive is optional in our class, but I will show you how to do that. So if you go to File, Save As. Luckily, one of the nice things about version 2013 of Excel is it's automatically linked to SkyDrive. So you would simply choose SkyDrive, and then in your SkyDrive you can have various folders. I would put it, for example, in my Documents folder, and you can see I have some other files there, and then you simply click Save. Again, though, using SkyDrive is optional. Now in step 14 it asks us to close any open workbooks and of course to save them if you need to.